My friends, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here, ready to work on some math problems. Now, I'm not gonna lie, some of these problems are a bit challenging, but I know that you can do this, okay? It's just gonna take some practice, and you've got this, my friend. Okay, if you need to watch the video over a couple of times, I definitely do. And if you feel like you could use a little bit more background help, I encourage you to click on the link down below and join my membership. It's affordable and I have well over 100 videos ready to help you, even in math. Okay, now if you are a teacher, I would like you to click the link down below and join my email list, okay? I send out free content every single week to help you instructors in your teaching. Okay, my friends, let's get started on some math practice. What are the zeros of the function? And so here we have f of x. Anytime you see f of x, it's really just like, you could say like y, okay? So f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 24, okay? So if you look at this, we have that x squared right there. That means that we're dealing with a quadratic, okay? And so there's actually two different ways that we can solve for this. And I'm going to teach you both ways to solve, okay? There's one way that's maybe a little bit easier for some, and one way that requires a little bit more work, but some people find it more e a little bit easier. So it's up to you which way you do it, but I'm going to go over it for you. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna look at this 24, and we need to come up with what are the factors of 24. So what numbers go into 24? So I'm gonna say 24 right here. So one and 24, two times 12, three times eight, four times six. So those are the numbers multiplied together all give me 24, right? And so I have to think about if I were to add two numbers together or add a number and subtract a number, I need to get this positive two, okay? So if you look here, six and four, if I have a positive six and a negative four, add those together, I get a positive two. Now notice here how it's minus 24. And so because it's minus 24, that tells me that I have one positive and one negative. And this right here, that are the positive two, tells me that the large larger number is going to be the positive number. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have here x plus a number times x minus a number. And I just said here that six is the positive number and four is the negative number. Now, if you're looking at the answers, what do you see? You see here a positive six and a negative four, right? So you might be thinking, yes, Michelle, that is the answer, but it's not, okay? <laughs> it's not. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go x plus six equals zero, and then I'm gonna solve for x, right? So to do that, I subtract six from both sides, and I get here x equals negative six. We're gonna do the same on the other side. So I have x minus four equals zero, and then I need to add four to both sides, and I get, this cancels out, x equals positive four. So my two answers are x equals negative six and x equals positive four. So B is my answer. Now friends, this definitely is a harder problem. And remember on the GED and on the high set test, you actually don't have to get all the problems right. So this might be the type of problem. If you see this, you spend maybe a little bit of time on it, but not too much. And then you move on. Okay. Unless you really understand how to do this, this is not the type of problem I would spend as much time on. Okay, but now as promised, I'm gonna show you another way to give you the same answer, and this is going to be using the quadratic equation. Okay, so if you're taking the GED, the quadratic equation will be provided for you. If you're taking the high set, it will not be provided for you. So you actually have to memorize the quadratic equation if you're doing the high set test. But that's okay, because I have a little jingle for you. Okay, so I want you to think about pop goes the weasel. Okay, and you're gonna need to memorize this if you're taking the high set test. So here we have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all 
over 2a. There we go. That's the quadratic equation. Practice that. Start singing it to yourself. Sing it to your family. Get it in your head if this is the technique that you're going to use to solve this problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this is right in a row for me, and so that makes it really easy. Now, if I look at my x squared, I can actually just put a little 1 right in front of it. I like to say mathematicians are lazy, and so they don't put the 1 in front of the, the number. Okay, so where I have my x squared, Squared, that's going to be my a. So I have here the number in front of the x squared is the 1, right? And now I have my b. b has, it's the 2 where it's just in front of the x, and then c is negative 24. So now I'm just going to plug and chug and put this all together in my equation. Okay, so here I have x is equal to negative b, so b is 2, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 2 squared minus 4, and then a is 1 times c, which is negative 24, make that a little longer, all over 2, and then a is 1. So now that I filled that in, I'm just going to solve for it. And you want to make sure you remember your order of operations, your PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, so let's go through here, and I have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root. So I know that 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. And then I'm going to multiply the rest of this together. So I have negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and then negative 4 times negative 24 is going to be a positive 96, all over 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so now let's keep solving it. So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 96 is 100, all over 2. Okay, now I know the square root of 100 is what number times itself gives me 100, and that's 10. So I have here x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 10 all over 2. Okay, now we're going to break it into two different pieces. So I'm actually going to change my color here. Let's go purple. So first I'm going to go x is equal to negative 2 plus 10 over 2. So negative 2 plus 10 is 8. So I have x is equal to 8 over 2, and 8 over 2 is 4. Now let's do a different color. Let's do red. And I have negative 2 minus 10 over 2 equals, so negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12 over 2 is equal to negative 6. So here's my answer, B, and it's the same answer I got before. So as you can see, this one, yeah, it's a little bit more work than factoring it. And it's up to you which one you do, whether you use the quadratic equation or whether you factor. So do your best. Uh, come back to this video. Maybe if it was a little bit challenging, come back to it again tomorrow. Try one of these techniques on your own. And remember, you only have to do one, but I wanted to show you both techniques just to make it one of them works for you, okay? But let's move on to number two. Promise the rest of the questions in this video are not going to be as challenging as this first one was. Question number two. What is the sum of 5x squared plus 3x minus 7 and 12x plus 12. Okay, friends, this one is way easier than the one we just did. I can tell you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm really just going to combine my like terms. So I'm going to say x, 5x squared plus 3x minus 7, and then I'm going to put the numbers right in line with the similar numbers, okay? So the 12x is similar to the 3x, so I'm going to put 12x plus 12. And now I just add them together. So there's nothing to add to the 5x squared, but here I can go 3x plus 12x is 15x. And then negative 7 plus 12 is going to be a positive 5. Okay, now I turned this into a PDF, and sometimes when I turn math into a PDF, the PDF doesn't like it. So uh, the answer is A, even though it looks a little bit funky in our answer key here. But so 5x squared plus 15x plus 5. Now, just for fun, let's go even a step further because the answers are not always going to look like this. So 5 x squared plus 15x plus 5. Is there a number that is similar in all of those? Yes, 5 is a factor of all of them. So I could actually take the 5 out, and if I take 5 out of, of x squared, it's just going to be x squared plus 5 goes into 15 three times, right? So 3x and 5 goes into 5 once. So it could actually 
look like this, but that's taking it a step further than they're actually looking for in this problem. Question number three. Aisha has $100 saved from her job. She wants to buy as many charms for her bracelet at $4 each and earrings at $5 per set as she can without spending all of her money. The inequality represents her spending, where X is the number of charms and Y is the number of sets of earrings. Which ordered pair represents a combination of charms and earrings Aisha can buy? Okay, so what we're gonna do is she wants to spend the $100, right? Or she wants to spend less than $100. So she can spend really up to $99 because right here it has just less than, it doesn't have less than or equal to. So we're looking for charms and earrings, there we go. How many can she buy and not spend $100? Okay, which one of these adds up to being less than? So what we're gonna do is we're just going to go along and see how it goes. So I'm going to start with A. So I'm gonna go four times and I'm gonna put 16 where the X is, plus five and then put the eight where the Y is. Okay, and let's see what this equals. So if I go four times 16 plus five times eight, I get 104. Can she buy those? No, she can't. So A is out of the question. Now let's look at B and B is right here. So with B, I'm going to go four times 15 plus five times eight. And what do I get? 100. Now, does that add up to, is 100 less than 100? No, so B is not gonna work either. Now let's do C. So we're gonna do four times nine plus five times 13, and I get 101. Usually like when we get the answer a little bit closer to the beginning, but that's okay, we're just gonna keep going. Okay, D, so four times six plus five times 15. So when I multiply those and then add them together, I get 99. Woo, there's, there's our answer. D is our answer. But let's just do E since we're so close and then maybe we can check if we made a mistake or not. Okay, so E, we have four times five plus five times 16 and what do I get? 100, so again, D is our answer. So she can buy six charms and 15 pairs of earrings. Number four, which of the following graphs represents the relationship between X and Y if Y always increases as X always increases? Okay, so don't even look at our answer options, A, B, C, D, E. Don't even look at those. Let's just focus on those graphs and then go back to our answer, okay? So notice here we have Y is right here and X is right here. That's really standard. All four have that sequence happening. So what this is saying is when Y is going up, X is also going up. So they both always need to be moving. So let's look at the first one. Y, is Y always going up? Yes, it's always going to be increasing, right? And is X always going up? Is X always going over? Yes, it is. Right, so number one is one of the answers. Let's look at the second one. Is Y always going up in this one right here? No, it's not. Actually, Y is it's always going down, right? Or maybe it's a little steady at the beginning, but then it's going down. Y, X is always moving, maybe not quite at the end, but yeah, that's, that's not it, right? The third one, you can see X is always going forward, but look at Y. See how right here, Y just kind of stays put, it doesn't move, so that's not an answer. But look at number four. Y is always going up. Even though Y is not going up evenly, it's still increasing, right? So it's still always going up and X is always going over. So this is going to be our other answer and now we look at which one has one and four and the answer is A. Number five, a restaurant is at a 75% capacity with 120 patrons. How many people are in the restaurant when it is at 100% capacity? Okay, so this is an equation that is really important for you to know how to do. So it is going to be part over whole equals percent 
over 100, okay? And sometimes you could go part over whole equals part over whole, or this, whenever you have a percent, this is what we're gonna do. So what we need to do is we're going to say part over whole is percent over 100. So we know where the percent is, right? So we know that it is at 75% capacity. So we're gonna put 75% and 100 always goes right there. So what is it at when it's at 75% capacity? Right here, 120 patrons. So what we're looking for is what is it when it's at 100% capacity, which is right here. So we're going to cross multiply and solve for X, okay? I also like to call this the caterpillar technique. Okay, so we're gonna go 120 times 100. 120 times 100, I can actually just add two zeros to that. And then I'm going to divide that by 75. And what do I get? 160. Okay, and look, there's my answer. But I also want you to kind of look at these. Does 160 make sense? Yeah, it does, right? Because if 75% capacity is 120, then a little bit more would be, would be that 100%, right? So what I could do is I could look at A. Would that be 100%? No, because that's less. Uh, B, 120? Well, no, because that's 75% capacity. And D and E are actually way too big. So using the process of elimination, you can just sort of check your work does this number make sense? And in this case, yes it does. Woo, we made it to the end. I want you to do me a favor and comment down below and tell me that you are still here, okay? Comment, I made it to the end or I am still here. That means that you are dedicated you're focused and you're gonna get this friends. I know it, okay? Um, if you haven't checked out my membership, click the link right down below and teachers join my email list. It's completely free. I send out all sorts of great content just for you teachers. Okay, friends, I will see you in the next video. Believe in yourself just like I believe in you and you have a beautiful day. Peace and God bless. No, peace, God bless. <laughs>